Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering and Assessment Channel. As you know, these days we are focusing on the module of Chemical Reaction Engineering. So in this regard, we are bringing the lecture number 47 for our valuable viewers. As a recap, let's re look at the reactor types which we have discussed in our previous lecture, which was lecture number 46. And we have studied different types. First type was the CSTR, then tubular reactor, batch reactor, then we have studied two types of semi batch reactor in which one of the reactant is in excess while the other is fed continuously. Then the tubular reactor with side streams. One of the reactant is added as a side stream. In this case, B is added, while in this case, A is added. Then series of small CSTRs. Then tubular reactor with recycle and CSTR with recycle. The CSTR with recycle is used for the liquid systems while the tubular reactor with recycle is used for the gas systems. In the same way, membrane reactor and reactive distillation, the reactive distillation is used for the liquid phase systems, while membrane reactor is used for the gas phase system. So this is the previous recap of the different reactor types which we have studied. And now based on these types, we will select the suitable reactor for a particular application. So today we are going to see that which type of reactor will be suitable for under which circumstances. So example number 8.2 is choice of reactor and conditions for parallel reactions that the two reactants A and B react to produce a desired product which is represented as D and undesired product represented as U with the rate of formation R of D is equal to K1 C raised to power alpha 1 Cb raised to power beta 1 and R of U is equal to K of 2 C raised to power alpha 2 Cb raised to power beta 2 Consider all possible combinations of reaction orders and select the reaction scheme which will maximize the selectivity. So we have to select such a combination that will maximize the value of selectivity for this parallel reaction. So the case number one is that A plus B produces D and A plus B produces U. So the case number one is that alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2 and represented as A. Beta 1 is greater than beta 2 represented as B. So this relation will goes to K1 over K2, CA raised to power A, CB raised to power B. So it shows that the instantaneous selectivity is directly proportional to the concentrations of both A and B. So it means that we have to keep the concentrations of the actant A and B as high as possible during the reaction. For gas phase system, we have to operate the system at high pressure and we have to reduce the inerts in the system. So obviously we will be using the batch reactor or tubular flow reactor in the system. This is the same case as we have discussed for a single reactant case. Going to case number two, alpha one is greater than alpha two. So represented as A, beta one less than beta two. So B is equal to B two minus beta two minus B one. Accordingly, the instantaneous selectivity formula will goes to K one over K two, C A raised to power A, well C B raised to power B. That B came to the denominator because beta 1 is less than beta 2. So Cb raised to power minus b or if you take it to the denominator, it will be Cb raised to power b. So it clearly shows that you have to maximize the concentration of reactant A while minimize the concentration of reactant B in the system. So accordingly, you have to use either the semi batch reactor in which B is slowly fed to A, membrane or tubular reactor with side stream of B or using the CSTRs in series with A fed to the first reactor while B fed to the east reactor. So we have studied these configurations in our previous lecture and at the start of today's lecture as well. Going to case number three, alpha one is less than alpha two and beta one is less than beta two. So alpha two minus alpha one is equal to A, beta two minus beta one is equal to B. So accordingly, both C A of A and C of B will go to the denominator. So S D by U is equal to K1 over K2 C A raised to power A C B raised to power B. So it means that we have to keep the concentration of both reactants A and B low in the process. Now how we can do that? We can select either CSTR, tubular reactor with large cycle ratio, P diluted with inert and if it's a gas phase system, we have to operate at low pressure. Going to case number 4, accordingly alpha 1 is less than alpha 2 that a is equal to alpha 2 minus alpha 1, beta 1 is greater than beta 2, B is equal to beta 1 minus beta 2. Accordingly, that will become K1 over K2 Cb raised to power B, Ca raised to power A. So accordingly, that will be the opposite of case 2, 
in case two we had said we have to minimize the concentration of b and to here we have to minimize the concentration of a keeping the concentration of reactant a as low and reactant b as high as possible during the reaction so same type of reactor will be used but now the role will be reversed how that in semi batch reactor we will slowly feed a to the system in case of membrane or tubular reactor we will use a stream or reactant a stream as side stream and then in case of cstr we will fed b to the first reactor while a to the reactors in series so these are the four cases four combination in which we have seen that how we can or under what condition we will use the reactor in case one we have simply said batch or pfr in case two and four we have said semi batch tubular membrane or series of small cstr while in case number three we had said that we have to either feed, dilute the feed, we have to use inerts in the system, we have to use CSTR or we have to use tubular with a large recycle ratio. So each category of reactor is dependent on the operating conditions as well. So that's it from today's lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then, it's goodbye. Stay tuned for more exciting videos on this channel.